What is up, my ninjas? Dart Frog Ninja here for the next episode of the Dart Discussion. On this episode, I'm going to go over bromeliads. I'm going to show you two mounting techniques. I'm going to talk about why they're important and why you should probably have some in your vivarium. So in the next segment, we'll go over what we have in front of me here, how I'm going to mount them, and then I'll reveal the winning spot that you all chose for the one bromeliad. Without further ado, let's get hopping. All right, my ninjas, so in front of you, you see the two bromeliads that I showed off in the unboxing video, the Fireball and the Zoe, or Zoe. Now, you can see I have two different techniques here. On this one, I have some damp sphagnum moss wrapped around the, the base. And on this one, nothing. And you'll see why here shortly, because I'm going to mount them in two different ways, and we'll, we're good to go. But sphagnum moss is definitely necessary when you use bromeliads. Make sure you get it damp, not, not soaking wet. You don't want it dripping water, so you can squeeze the water out of it. And once you squeeze the water out of it, and as long as it's damp from there, that's fine. So that's always good to have. Make sure you get some sphagnum moss or some kind of moss to add whenever you would put bromeliads in. So now why do you need bromeliads? Uh, well, depending on the species of frog, they could be absolutely crucial. Or, you know, they could just be there for decoration to make your tank look nicer. But uh, for your smaller species, your thumbnails, um, these are where they live. Your thumbnails are going to live in these. They're going to lay their eggs here, rear their tadpoles here, uh, and then they'll also go in it to soak. So, and then some of your larger frogs will, will use it as well to lay eggs and uh, deposit tadpoles and to soak. And these also add to your humidity level because they do hold water in the, in the urn. This is what the center part is called right here. It's called the, the urn, and that does hold water. Now, when you have water in there, it's probably good to flush it out like once a week, the water. So if you have a hand mister or something, just, you know, turn the, turn the stream on so it's a steady stream and spray it out and wash out the water and put new water in it. So, um, bromeliads, you can either plant, the, plant them in the ground for the most part, depending on the species, or you can mount them to different wood or background features. So that's what... That's what I'm going to do today, and the uh, winning spot is the first picture of the stick where the Obermilliad was. I'm going to put the fireball there. That's why I have it wrapped here, because I'm going to attach it to stick. And then the Zoe is going to go on the cork tube that is up against the background. There's a nice big crack there. I'm just going to put that there. So this next segment, I'm just going to go ahead and put them in so you guys can see where they're going to go. And then uh, we'll be all done. So here we go, guys. All right, my ninjas, as you can see, I'm going ahead and attaching this fireball to the stick. I have a uh, mounting wire, floral mounting wire, which I don't think I cut lar large enough piece. I think I'm going to have to redo this here. Well, there's that. It's there. It's not 100% steady, so I don't, I don't really like that. So I'm going to cut out another piece, and I'm going to do a, a, a bit longer of a piece. And... There we go. So we got another floral mounting wire. You can buy that from any Herps or some other online realtor, uh, retailers. You can also uh, use fishing line. Um, people use paper clips, depending on how you're going to attach it. And then some people also use uh, some people also use thumbtacks if they're going to mount the uh, bromeliad 
into their background but basically that's what you want to do right there guys is have it nice and mounted right there it's fairly solid um, it's not going to go anywhere but uh, the moss is going to help encourage root root growth that's why you put damp the damp moss there it's going to encourage it to anchor to where it's at so that's that's pretty set where it's at right now and then you can eventually remove the fishing wire the line of uh, the mountings this stuff right here you can eventually move it remove it if your uh, bromelia does anchor to the uh, stick or wood or whatever you're using so again you, you can take that out if you if it once it mounts so that's all done now on to the second one And there's Zed. Second one is going to go up nice and high. I'm going to put it in here. And this one, I'm going to play with this one a little bit because I'm not 100% sure if this is... Let's see. That is a nice tight fit. So if you can see that guys, this is the second mounting technique and this is just if you can have a crack or crevice in your wood or your background, you just take that long stem like uh, piece on the end that's called a stolen and then you insert it until it's a nice tight fit into whatever crack or crevice you're using. And then what you want to do next is get yourself a little bit of sphagnum moss. And again, squeeze it out. Make sure that there's, it's not dripping wet, but it's nice and damp. And then if you want, you can kind of patch it in in spots if you need to. This might be a little tough to do. All right. should be good and uh, boom there you go there's the sphagnum moss and then the zoe is nice and high and then the last part you're going to want to do guys is you're going to want to fill their fill them with water fill the urns up with water just enough so that there's standing water in it and i will do that later but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much two of the ways you can mount bromeliads. And let's get a nice wide tank shot here. Sorry guys, I'm doing this. Close the glass. And let's get a nice wide tank shot. And there you go. Both bromeliads are in place. They should do well. Their colors will change. Uh, this one will get a uh, nice bright red redder than it is and then this will get nice and green and then that stripe will fade more into a pinkish and then you'll see the white stripe more but that should do well but there you have it guys the winning spot was here on the stick for the fireball and then i wanted to put that guy there so we're good to go i just got to fill him up with water and i'll report back to you guys next week and we'll see uh, how they're doing so that's it for this episode of the Dart Discussion. This is Dart Frog Ninja saying please subscribe, watch, share, like my videos, click that little subscription button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen at the very end of this video, and as always, frog on.